Hey, Travis kiddos. Happy Wednesday. Happy Earth Day. Um, I hope you are getting a chance to celebrate and protect and heal our wonderful planet. Um, and if you had a chance to check out the Scholastic News article yesterday or even today, um, Recycle That Gum, it shows a great way to take something and instead of just throwing it away, turn it into something else. Um, so recycling gum into other things. It's pretty cool. And also even better, she uses molds. Um, the scientist who melts down the gum and makes things out of it. Um, she uses molds to create them. And we also talked about using molds to create other things in our reading this week in The Joy of a Ship, how they melt the steel to um, into molds, let it cool and harden so that they can use those pieces to build the ship. So cool that we have a little bit of crossover there. Um, and again, I hope you're enjoying celebrating Earth Day. Um, let's talk about some math. So yesterday in the math workbook, this is enrichment work. Um, the essentials are the textbook online through Think Central. But the enrichment work, um, in here yesterday, we were talking about greater than, less than with um, tens and ones. And some of those ones were more than nine. So over 10 ones. And I want to review that with you guys. Um, for which one, how that works, and um, and using some good number sense to work on place value um, and kind of composing and decomposing these numbers as well. So if I had the number, let's go with the number 34 to start, okay? So 34, we could say that is three tens and four ones. I'm gonna write it and draw a picture so that I can show you. I can't really hold up my base 10 blocks. Um, I don't have enough hands for that. So <laughs> instead of using the pieces, I'm gonna um, draw it on here for you, okay? So three tens, four ones, or I can draw it like this. So three sticks, those are my tens, remember? And four dots or four ones. Okay, now I could write this another way. In <coughs> excuse me, instead of three tens and four ones, I could trade one of these tens for ten ones. So if I have two tens and trade one of the tens for ten ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then my four ones, one, two, three, four, now I have two tens. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 ones. Is that the same as 34? I don't know. Do you trust it? Do you believe it? Let's check and make sure. So we have 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. It's still 34, but it's just shown in a different way. So we're trading one of the tens for 10 ones. So instead of three tens, four ones, it's two tens, 14 ones. What if we wanted to go down another 10? So what if we wanted only one 10? How many ones would we have now? So let's draw it. One 10. And now I need to trade one of the other tens for 10 ones again. It's an equal trade because 10 ones is the same as one 10, right? Um, so 10, now I need the other 10 ones here like I had last time. Or it's like I traded two 10s for 10, 20 ones, right? Or two sets of 10 ones. <laughs> and now I show my four ones, okay? So I have one 10 and how many ones? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 ones. Now what if I wanted to trade this 10 also for 10 ones? So I would not have any 10s anymore. This time I only have ones. And I'm going to have three sets of 10 ones. 
running out of space here. And then my four ones I'll put down here. Okay, so now I have zero tens and 34 ones. 10 here, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. All of these are the same number. They're all 34. They're just shown in a different way, right? So when we're making a, um, a place value chart, we usually say you can't have more than nine ones in the ones place, but we can show this number in a lot of different ways, okay? This is super helpful for when we are subtracting with regrouping, right? Because if I was doing 34 minus eight, I can't take away eight ones from four, but if I change three tens, four ones into two tens, 14 ones, all of a sudden I have enough ones to take away eight. So learning um, how these numbers correspond to each other is really important and very, very helpful for those higher math skills, okay? Like subtraction with regrouping. Let's try one more. Um, and then I will show you the workbook pages for today. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger so I might not draw all of the ones and get all the way down, um, but you are welcome to do that on your own. So let's do a really big one. Let's do 82. Okay, so 82 is eight tens, because if I split this up, it's 80 and two, right? Eight tens, two ones. Like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, tens, two ones. Now, what if I do seven tens? How many ones? So seven tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm even just gonna do it on here. Trade a 10 for 10 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know this is a little smaller this time, but so we have seven tens. 10, 11, 12 ones. Now you might also notice a pattern as I go here. What about six tens? So if I trade another 10, I don't know if I can squeeze that in there. I'm gonna put it on the other side because I don't think I can fit it there. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, so now I have six tens, 10, 20, 21, 22. 22 ones. Okay, so here you notice it's 2, 12, 22. We're just trading over one of the tens into 10 ones so that we're adding a 10 each time to the ones. Okay, so you can keep going with this. Five tens would be, so just trade that 10 for 10 ones. So instead of 22, we have 32 ones. Okay, four tens. 42 ones. You can go all the way down. So you can figure out the rest if you had three tens, two tens, one ten, or zero tens. Okay. Um, you can also build this as always using cubes, using blocks, using any old thing you have in your house to represent tens and ones. Um, you can practice by building those as well. Really um, helpful to have those physical objects, those manipulatives, to show exactly what's going on there, okay? And when you use those, make sure you're trading a 10 or a stick for 10 ones. No more, no less, has to be an equal trade. Same thing if you're drawing it. It has to be an equal trade, okay? So that might help you if you struggled a little bit or you want to go back and check your work here, you can try that there because now we know instead of six tens, 15 ones, let's flip it back. So six tens, 15 ones, I'm gonna trade those 10 ones back into a 10. So that would be seven tens and five ones, so 75. And 75, seven tens, five ones, hey look, that's the same, that would be equal. Okay, so um, you can trade those tens and ones back and forth as long as it's an equal trade, and that can help you um, for this page as well as the subtraction with regrouping, um, or even addition with regrouping as well. As you make more ten, uh, more ones, and you have to put the ten in the tens place, 
you can look at it that way as well. Okay, today's enrichment work in the math workbook. So put on your thinking cap. Let's do it. Put it on, tie it, snap it in tightly, make sure it's nice and snug, any other things you need to get it on, and of course, make sure the batteries are charged and turn it on. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> so um, your math thinking cap today, you have a couple challenges. So read each clue, cross out the numbers that are incorrect, then fill in the blanks. Okay, so we have the numbers 46, 50, 78, and 93. The mystery number is less than 90. So if the mystery number is less than 90, which ones could we cross out? Hmm. So if the number has to be less than 90, we know that a number that's more than 90 could not be the mystery number because it's not less than 90. So I could cross out 93. We know it's not 93. It is greater than 56. So if we know the mystery number has to be more than 56, what could we cross out? We can cross out the numbers that are less than 56. So you can figure out what the mystery number is. Go ahead and finish that. Um, and you can act physically cross them out with your pencil. I just didn't want to do too much here and show you everything. I'll talk you through it, but I want you to do a little bit of work on your own. Okay, the next one is the same idea, but using bowling balls and some different mystery clues. So go ahead and do that one on your own. Okay, then you also have um, another mystery number using signs. Okay, same thing. Use the clues to cross out the ones that cannot be and figure out the mystery number. Now this one is just like the textbook, page 212. Um, they show you uh, the picture of the 100 chart and you can um, play Guess My Number. You can talk about um, patterns using the 100 chart, which is what you're gonna be doing here. Now it's a little bit tough because the questions are on the back, so you might have to flip back and forth. If you want to make your own 100s chart, you can do that so that you're not flipping back and forth. Totally up to you. Um, so, uh, or you could use the one online um, while you work on the questions. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the chart to complete the number patterns. You're gonna have to explain the rule for the number pattern. Now this is the thinking cap. It's a bit of a challenge. It's not simple, okay? That's why they're asking that added step of not only figure out the pattern, which is tough, but then explain what is happening in the pattern. Yesterday's um, enrichment video, I showed you how to figure out what was happening between the patterns and how to, um, and that you can write it between. So that is my explanation of the pattern, like the one that was going up by fives. I put plus five, so you could write the pattern goes up by five, or you add five each time, okay? So that's a way to explain the pattern. If you need to check out yesterday's video to walk through that, really great to um, review that as well, okay? So here is the example, 22, 25, 28, 31. So 22, 25, 30, 28, 31. And you can actually count up. So 22 to 25, let's see. What's happening between there? One, two, three. It's going up three, okay? So you could say counting on in steps of three from the number before it, or you could say count going up three or counting up three. Now there's another way to say it, adding three to the number before it. Lots of different ways. You can put it in your own words, write it, put your own spin on it, right? <laughs> but it's the same idea, just explaining what's happening in the pattern and finding the next few numbers in the pattern. They have that example for you. And then on the back side, you have your own patterns to figure out and explain the rule, okay? Good luck. Um, some of them get a little bit tricky, so uh, work carefully. Use the 100 chart to help you if you'd like. It's there for you. It's a good resource, right? We always like to use our resources to solve problems. Um, if you have any questions on that, let me know, but I know you can do it. Put your mind to it and just try your best, okay? You have your thinking cap, so that will definitely help you. Um, have fun with all of it. Happy Earth Day um, and happy learning.